Today we're going to talk about another key skill for life called resilience. For some of the session we're going to use the resilience passport form attached. If you do not have access to this sheet then you can always create your own by following the steps throughout the session. All schools hope to create resilient learners to help them as individuals when they leave school. But what exactly does resilience mean? Pause the video here and write down what you think resilience is. Resilience is the quality that allows some people to be knocked down by life and come back stronger than ever, not letting failure overcome them. Resilience is not always about getting things right or always being the winner, it's about struggling and how we react to this. Resilience is important because it helps you to try new things. It encourages you to take on challenges. It keeps you going when things get tough and keeps your dream alive. It helps you deal with failure and frustration and it gives you the strength to get up and try again. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to complete the Resilience Passport for this session and you can use the sheet attached to help you design your own or use the one provided. It's important that you keep this session as personal and realistic for you. There are no right and wrong answers as this is about developing a skill that will help you in school and beyond. Step one on our passports is place. As human beings, we tend to have places where we feel safe and comfortable. And it's very hard for us to push ourselves out of our safe places. This is only natural. Ask yourself this, if we carry on doing the same things and we never take any risks, how will anything ever change? How will you meet your targets and goals by doing the same thing every day? Add to your passport three things you could push yourself to do. Here are some examples of things you could try. Some of them will seem daft as you may do them already and that's why this piece of work will differ for every pupil. Some pupils will ask questions constantly in lessons whilst others will sit and struggle as they don't feel comfy asking for support. Step two is passion. Everyone has different likes and dislikes and as a school we recognise that although we'd love you to enjoy every single lesson, you probably have your favourites and the ones you don't like as much. If you think about the lessons you don't like as much, I bet you may find those are the lessons you may struggle or your behaviour may change in those lessons. Take a second and write down a subject you don't particularly enjoy as much. Then write how you think you're doing in this subject. Now write down a lesson that you really enjoy. Do you behave any differently in this lesson? What can you do to change this? Unfortunately, teachers can't create lessons that everyone feels comfortable with all the time. We need to push you out of your comfort zones in order for you to learn. Think of a plan of support that you can do to help you re-engage yourself with your least favourite lessons. I'm not saying that you'll wake up and love this lesson, but you may recognise that it's something you need to do in order for you to reach your goals. This doesn't have to be a process where you're on your own. Think about the support that you may need and who you can speak to about this. Step three, purpose. The things we are passionate about, passionate about often give us a purpose. This is like saying the lessons you enjoy in school or your hobbies could lead to a job goal in the future. Look at the examples on the sheet what interests and purpose do you think suit you? Remember, as always, this is personal and if you don't see any that suit you, add some. Pause the video now while you complete step three. Step four is people. There is only you that can help yourself become resilient. However, there are people that can support you in the process. It's up to you to judge who you turn to for support and whose advice you take on board. And as always, there will be people who influence you positively and negatively, and it's up to you to make the right choice. Look at step four on your passport and think about who supports you positively and who doesn't in these situations. Pause the video while you write down your responses. Think about who influences your actions the most. Do these people match up with who you've written in the left-hand column? If not, maybe you should rethink this. 
as they may be having a negative influence on you and your learning journey. Step five is planning. You may have probably had many lessons on target setting and goals. You may have already heard about SMART targets. Here is a reminder of what a SMART target looks like. Have a look at your resilience passport and think about what your dream is once you've left school. You might not know what job you want to do at this point and that's fine. You'll get careers advice throughout your school journey. But think about what you'd want your, lo your life to look like. Pause the video whilst you complete step five. Step six, mindset. This session may link very closely with another tutorial on positive thinking, so I won't go into this in too much detail. Have you ever said to your teacher or someone at home, I can't do this? And have they ever said back to you, there's no such thing as can't? Well, that's wrong. There is such thing as can't if you look at it in a positive way and add yet on the end of it. I can't do this yet means you won't always stay struggling and you may be supported until you can. According to some psychologists, we need to have an internal dialogue, which is a self-talk, in the ratio of three positive thoughts to one negative in order to build self-belief and resilience. Look at step six on your resilience passport and write down three things you can do well and one thing you can't. Then write yet after the thing you can't do to turn your negative thought into a resilient one. Pause the video until you've completed this. And that's it. Your resilience passport is complete. Keep it somewhere private as it contains personal information for you to look back on. Here are some links for further information to support you in your journey to resilience. If you have any questions, please speak to the member of staff leading this session or leave a comment if you're doing this work online. And remember, there is such thing as can't, but only if you add yet to the end of it.